Hi, I'm Pierre from Physic Labs. Physic is a portable laboratory for scientific experimentation, which uses the sensors present in your smartphone or tablet to record and analyze physical data. Physic has many functionalities, and I will describe a lot of them in this short presentation. When we designed Physic, we had four goals in mind. One, create a modern experimentation tool that students will be comfortable using. This means working on the ergonomics so that it is comparable to the apps students use today, like Messenger or Instagram. Two, build a scientific instrument and not a toy. Data needs to be precise, its acquisition fully configurable. Units need to be properly displayed and measurements need to be relevant. Three, promote collaborative work. Science is about collaboration, so we wanted the tool to foster collaboration between students, but also between teachers and students and within the teaching community. Finally, the app needed to be free. We wanted Physic to democratize experimentation to be used everywhere, easily, for free, without having to register or share your data in any way. Experimentation is necessary to learn real science, but scientific apparatus is expensive and needs to be maintained carefully. Sometimes it can be difficult to use or be outdated. Because Physic uses smartphones, which are present in most students' and teachers' pockets today, it provides a very economical way of conducting experimentation. It can replace or complement laboratory equipment. Because it is portable, it can also be used at home or in the field, a true game changer for science experimentation. Physic is organized around four main screens, which can be accessed at all times directly from the lower header. Students can switch easily between the instrument screen the notebook screen, the tool screen, and the protocol screen. Screens are independent, so you can switch screens without losing what you're doing. The instrument screen is the place where you visualize and record information coming from the sensors of your smartphone. What is immediately visible is the value measured by the sensor at the center alongside an icon which describes the instrument and, of course, the unit of measurement. Below is the graph in real time of the data that is currently detected by the sensor. You see that the axes are clearly labeled with the unit and the name. Finally, towards the bottom, you find two red buttons. The one on the right is used to record the information over a period of time. And the other one is used to take a snapshot of the data. Every instrument has its own color to make it attractive and add a bit of fun to the experience. Students will surely love that. Every instrument also has its own type of graph. The acceleration and the sound acetogram are displayed as line charts whereas the frequency spectrum is displayed as a bar graph. So, what information can you record with Physic? Students can record and analyze more than 30 different types of data coming from the sensors of their smartphone. Smartphones incorporate many different sensors that provide students with accurate data on acceleration, gravity, bearing, colors, absorbance, altitude, longitude, speed, rotation, tilt, brightness, luminance, magnetic field, steps, sound frequency, volume, oscillograph, and frequency spectrum. Students can also add external sensors. Data is well organized by sensor type and helps students identify where the information comes from. Students will require detailed information on the scientific instrument they are using. 
This information can be found in the I menu on the top right of the instrument screen. Internet access is not required and no external data or connection is needed when using Physic. When students finish recording data, what happens? Information is automatically stored in the notebook, accessible in the lower header. The notebook is the place for students to analyse their results, document their analysis and draw their conclusions. By zooming, rescaling, changing the type of graph or using the reticle, students are able to analyse precisely the data they've collected and organise it in their notebook the way they like. All of these tools are available in the lower part of the graph. They can add as many data recordings as they want. Students may also add text, photos or tables to create comprehensive documents that detail their analysis. All information can be moved around, duplicated or deleted easily in the notebook. Notebooks are automatically saved so that students will never lose their work. Once the notebook is organised, students can export it in the form of a nice, well-presented PDF document. This finalised document can then be shared using all communication tools available to them. For example, WhatsApp, Messenger, Email, Messages, Google Drive or even Bluetooth. Notebooks can also be exported as a CSV file to be imported in Excel or be used as a database in a programming language like Python. Students can also share the data they have collected. In the slide, student one wants to share his or her measures and photos with another student who can gather the data for the whole group. This student can then organize it and create a finalized document that will be sent to the teacher. Note that students can share the whole notebook or simply parts of it. Physic simply makes collaboration easy. On top of the two functionalities we have described, recording data and organising it inside notebooks, we have added a third extremely important functionality to Physic, the experimentation tools. You will find them in the Tools tab in the bottom header. These tools are extremely useful to perform advanced measures or to help with specific types of experimentation. I will describe some of these tools, but make sure you try the others as well. One tool that is really powerful is the dual recording. This functionality allows students to measure two types of data simultaneously. They can record data relating to the same instrument, for example, the linear x and y acceleration, but they can also record data that is coming from two completely different instruments. For example, if your students are working on sound and vibration, they can record the sound volume of a guitar as well as the vibration of its body at the same time. They can then plot the volume against the vibration level and identify that there is a strong correlation between the two. On the slide, you have an example where we have plotted the X and Y acceleration change while describing a circle with a mobile. Obviously, the X, Y plot shows a circle. Other tools that your students will want to use, because they are so handy when conducting experiments on sound, are the frequency synthesizer and the sound library. The frequency synthesizer allows your students to play pure frequencies on two voices with adjustable volumes and phase shifts. Students will generate sound with the synthesizer and analyse it at the same time as the oscillogram or the frequency spectrum. The sound library contains a number of sounds that will be useful for experiments on tonality, noise addition or even the Doppler effect. With these tools, the frequency synthesizer and the sound library, as well as all sound measurement capabilities, 
students have a complete suite of scientific instruments to perform amazing experimentation on sound. In many cases, students will have to conduct conditional measurements to compute the speed of sound or the value of standard gravity. With triggers, you can start or end a measure or stopwatch, depending on the elapsed time or the value of a sensor. Using triggers, students can program a sound stopwatch or a movement stopwatch. Triggers also introduce students to the concept of programming. It's a way for them to invent the tools they need to conduct an experiment. There are many other tools that you can use, like the intervalometer, the colour synthesizer, or the calibration menu, and we encourage you to try them all. Finally, I would like to talk to you about the protocol screen. This is a way for teachers to exchange simple protocols with their students. They can be created in the form of a text file or a QR code. Having uploaded the protocol, students will have all the information necessary to conduct the experiment. They will then alternate between the protocol screen, the measurements and the notebook as they progress throughout the experiment. Teachers can create physics protocols directly on the app or using a simple QR code generator. We have here an example of a protocol created with physic in QR code form. Note that no internet connection is required as all information is embedded in the QR code. It can be easily printed on a sheet of paper or exchanged between students using all sorts of communication tools. Physic turns any smartphone into a powerful scientific laboratory and we are convinced it will speed up and improve your students' understanding of key concepts in science. However, we also know that without a teacher to drive them, many students will have difficulties to get on board with experimentation. This is why we have also created a number of resources for educators specifically. On the website of the Lama La Pat Foundation, you can find a wealth of information on conducting a lesson with physic, as well as complete protocols that have been tried around the world. The Lama La Pat Foundation is well known for its work on pedagogy in science classes and is a partner of trapeze.digital. You will also find a lot of information on the app and plenty of exciting protocols on the physic.org website. You can upload protocols, QR codes and modify them to your liking. Create your own QR codes to share with your students. Also, you will find on the website detailed information about the app, a blog and how to connect physic to external sensors. Finally, I'm extremely excited to show you work today that has been done by students in France and Lebanon. Here are some documents produced years 12 and 13 as part of the class teaching the relation between centripetal acceleration and rotation. This work is done entirely with physic and the students send their work to the teacher using WhatsApp. Here is also some more work relating to the protocol astronaut and spinners. This is a group work and students have shared their measurements and photos and selected the best ones to be included in the final document. Finally, this is work done with years 10 and 11 as part of the rectilinear and uniform movements lesson. This project was done during lockdown last year and produced entirely with physic. Physic is not only used in physics, but also, for example, in maths, in natural science to study noise made by insects, food pigments or earthquakes, and in chemistry. Every single day we find new applications for physic, brought to us by teachers from around the world. All in all, physic is a very rich environment and by using it you will discover many functionalities that I have not described here. As a matter of fact, your students might even find new functionalities before you do. In our experience, they love to use this tool and experimenting with it. And because the ergonomics are very close to other apps they use, 
they quickly get the spirit of the app and explore all the different possibilities. At trapeze.digital, we are convinced that Physic will be useful to you to teach science. We are happy to receive your comments and your suggestions. Thank you very much.